what I find fascinating, all three of these shows, Andor, The Rings of Power, and House of the Dragon, they're not only going head to head, which is fascinating in and of itself, but they all have the same problem. They're all part of a major brand, but yet not one of them represents something that is, you know, a story or a character that is well known to fans of said brand. I mean, there's like a general idea. They're like, hey, you like the Targaryens, right? Or you like those Lord of the Rings movies? And then also with Andor, they're like, wasn't Rogue One good? It made a billion dollars. I don't know why nobody's, nobody seems to be that interested in any of these shows. So it kind of sucks that they're going up against each other because I don't think any of them can stand to, I don't think any of them can weather any dilution. Yet here we go, dilute away because they're all sharing the same audiences. They all pretty much air at the same time. But that's fascinating to me, fascinating. And we'll see if any of them can break through. Uh, So yes, we're finally getting uh, a head-to-head competition amongst the big streamers with these three shows that are, again, very evenly matched and that they're all a little weak. (laughs) All right, so uh, HBO, and this is an HBO show, House of the Dragon, so it would seem that it would not be able to count in Nielsen ratings because HBO is technically premium cable and not a streaming service. What the heck, man? This is ridiculous. Uh, so I, I think that's cheating a little bit, not to have to go head to head in the um, in the ratings. Uh, so anyway, House of the Dragon is ten episodes, beginning August twenty first, and it will run through October twenty third at that rate on Sundays. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Then Prime Video uh, has Rings of the Rings of Power, which is eight episode, which uh, eight episodes, which starts two weeks after House of the Dragon. So they finish the same week. So that runs September 2nd to October 21st. And that's on Fridays. That's the date that Prime Video has staked out. And they really actually do drop their content on Thursday night. It's around 8 p.m. It's like not very, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Not a very well-kept secret. It's like the unofficial drop time. And it's good because it gets a lot of uh, anticipation into the full day of release. Uh, But it kind of takes Thursday off the board for other streaming services a little bit. Uh, And then, of course, as you know, Netflix releases content mostly on Fridays. Uh, But anyway, Disney Plus, they started the ridiculous 3 a.m. drop time because that's midnight uh, in the last time zone, pretty much, uh, the West Coast, where Hollywood is. Uh, All right. So and it's weird. Hollywood is in kind of a bubble because of that. You know, you might think it's like for other reasons. But if you've ever been to Los Angeles uh, and spent some time there, as I have, and I know some of you have, and so you can speak to this, too. When you're three hours behind New York and way behind Europe and everything else, and, you know, Asia is already into the next day. You, you know, you don't really get to partake in the news cycle as much. That's one of the things I like b- about being in New York City in that, you know, it can oft- I feel very plugged in to the whole world in New York City. But when you're in L.A., I think you feel very removed from the rest of the world, which is, you know, that's a time zone thing. That's a time zone thing. All right. So anyway, back to these shows. Disney Plus has Andor, which is 12 episodes, although they're kicking off with three. Some of you pointed out that they delayed it for three weeks, and they're not changing up the release strategy because they're putting three episodes on the, on the day. So anyway, that goes from September 21st. It's a little, some of you think that it, it was delayed because it didn't want to go up against uh, House of the Dragon and Rings of Power. But it's going to be running against them for you know, a large chunk of its run, and if it does only one episode a week after the three episode debut it'll end november 23rd which seems like really late to me quite frankly and that's also that would put its series finale um season finale sorry because you know season two is about to begin production that would put uh its series its season finale on november 23rd which is the day before thanksgiving which is when Disney's Strange World debuts. So I don't know. I don't know how they would feel about that. And again, Disney Plus drops their things, their shows on Wednesday. So not as many days of the week, actually, when you think about all the other ones that the other streaming services have laid claim to. There's really only Monday, Tuesday, maybe Thursday, uh, you know, just be like, tough luck, Amazon Prime, release the shows on the day you're supposed to. And then also Saturday. Uh, I think Monday is not a bad date, to be honest with you. HBO has had some success with Mondays, with Chernobyl and then again the Gilded Age, uh, which both, you know, didn't start off with the bang, but by the end of their runs had accumulated significant audiences. So, you know, I think there's something there with the Monday release date. 
Uh, so we'll see how these shows do. We'll see. I'm very ex excited to discuss this. Uh, I have a lot of fun things for us to talk about. We're going to have a good time. Uh, and also, some of you pointed out in my reaction, I said that this show, you know, has not used stagecraft. And Tony Gilroy, in fact, some of you sent me some articles. Tony Gilroy has, has clarified he didn't use stagecraft for a single scene in this uh, show, which is very exciting. And you can see the difference. You can really see the difference. Although I don't, you know, I think The Mandalorian uses it very well. I think you just can't use stagecraft for everything. Um, and I do think that it, nothing beats being on location. Although even... Um, uh, Brings of Power has apparently announced that going forward they will not shoot all over the world and will shoot mostly in the UK for cost effectiveness. Uh, so, but I, I mean, I don't know. A lot of this stuff's shot in the UK for Andor and it looks pretty stunning. So, anyway, uh, some of you pointed out that the Batman did use stagecraft technology for a lot of the rooftop scene, you know, the in the building with uh, Gordon when they're in that uh, abandoned, uh, you know, building. I'm not going to give any spoilers in case, in case you have not for some reason not seen the Batman. Go fix that immediately. Uh, but then also uh, when the, in the cemetery scene with Selena, that's also stagecraft. And it was used, as, some, as many of you said, I agree, extremely well. But not well, I think, in Thor. Not used at all well in Thor, Thor uh, Love and Thunder. Um, so, so very interesting, very, very interesting. I, I mean, I also, by the way, Batman, the Batman kind of has, has a similar vibe to Andor. I love dark and gritty. I just love dark and gritty, which is maybe why I like Rogue One and now Andor so much. All right. Uh, and I'm really impressed that Disney allowed Andor to be dark and gritty because that is not their style at all. Uh, Andor actually looks the best to me of all of these shows. What do you think? Uh, but I know I'll, I'll review all of these and we'll see what the interest levels are. I'll I should cover Andor. I'll, I can't imagine covering Andor week to week. And I think it would be hard. I don't know, but I got to see what you, your guys' interest levels are and if it's worth the week to week uh, coverage. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see though. I'm going to see. All right. So here we go. So look at that vista. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, wow. So they hear like a boom as this uh, starship enters the atmosphere. They're like, God damn it. So uh, as you can see, it's rough out here. You know, it's a little bit like that Western feel, which is so cool. To, you, know, I, I, you know, I think that uh, the F uh, Favreau and Filoni really did a good job in particular bringing that genre into Star Wars instead of just fantasy. And I think it's a great idea because, you know, what is space living but being like a settler? in many of these places, right? I think it's really great. So, although some of you said this gun broke your your frame, your your, your immersion, you were like, that's a real gun. I mean, I don't know, it looks kind of spacey to me. I mean, that's a real shirt and a jacket. You don't see me, uh, by the way, this is the world of thumb holes uh, for the sleeves, and I love it. I'm like, where's the store? All right. So, and you can see she's trying to fix this hunk of junk. She's like, as if my life's not difficult enough. And look. What I wouldn't give for a part to fall off that thing so I could fix my little speeder thing. So yeah, that's like looks like a Star Destroyer. I love those things. They're so cool. Remember when Laura Dern ripped one in half? I'm still, I mean, I know a lot of you didn't like The Last Jedi, and I totally get it, but I personally enjoyed the film, as many of you know from my review. And someone yelled, which I guess is a famous Laura Dern line, F you, when she did that. And the theater had gone totally silent, which was a directorial creative choice. And it was just incredible. I loved it. You know, and it did, really did feel like an F you. And it was great. I, I don't know why she had a ball gown to lead an army on, but, you know, whatever. I did not enjoy that creative choice at all. I'm glad they don't have that stupid logo for the Star Wars stuff. You know, when they have the helmets and they're like, doo -doo -doo -doo, and I'm like, it's hideous. Get a new one. So look at that. That's a real location. That is so cool. Uh, they said they didn't use any stagecraft. I mean, they did use some green screen, I'm sure. <laughs> but this looks, that's very cool. It reminds me, actually, there's a scene just like this in Lightyear, by the way. But that clearly seems to be an abandoned mine. So over this scene, Cassian Andor is talking about how he's a thief. And if you want to steal from, steal from the Empire, you just walk right in like you belong, because they would never imagine that someone could steal from them. But I believe here he's, as a child, raiding an abandoned facility. Hey, start small, man, right? He's small, start small. So he's like, I started off with my training wheels of theft into a, a, an abandoned facility. Although that is great production design. Oh, I love it. It reminds me of why Rogue One was so great. Look how tropical and gorgeous it looks out there, right? But then, you know, technology for evil. 
Oh, and there's the Senate. Oh, I get scared whenever I see this place because these scenes were so boring in the prequels. This is a prequel too, actually. But you know, the Star Wars uh, uh, trilo prequel trilogy, you know, it was so boring. These scenes went on for way too long. Uh, but you know, they're, these are all the little senator pods. And every time someone has to speak, their senate pod has to like go to the middle. I don't think every time. I think if they're like, you know, it's like the real life government. You know, whoever is presenting goes up to the front and then other people can make a comment. But I'd be like, oh man, I don't want to wait for you to get over there. A lot of down, look how slowly that thing's moving. I'd be like, oh my God, I'll be back. <laughs> Let me know when they, when they dock at the middle. I'm going to go to the vending machine. So I love this guy. He's from Game of Thrones. Speaking of Game of Thrones, that's right. Yoink, I take your actors. Competing shows. Uh, so he's Anton Lesser. He, he's great. So he looked good and evil. And look at these guys. See, they went to the vending machine. <laughs> they were waiting. They were like, yeah, let's go get a break. They're just watching from here, enjoying some coffee. I need to see the Imperial break room. Oh, I love that. I love that kind of stuff. And I love they still have this really like 70s ridiculous technology. They have all these things that they can build. They can go through space and go to light speed and all these cool things. And yet they have, that's the graphs that they use. It's really hilarious. They're like sipping together. What are you guys having? What are you guys having? I hope it's iced tea. It's probably coffee. All right, so there he is. He snuck it in. You can see it's abandoned because you can see that screen is flickering. As if it wasn't janky enough. I wonder what he needs from here. Probably something to help him and his family and his, or his people. So let's see. They're just hoarding all these supplies. So he's a thief. And I love this because this is where he says they'd never expect someone like me to sneak into their home. And look, he's like, seems like he's maybe undercover in the, in the, in the ranks. Uh, you know, it's it, or at least some kind of subterfuge. I love it! You know, because those are some of the best sequences in Rogue One. So I love that, you know, he looks great too. He looks quite dashing. Uh, so he's like, it's on. And I like that he's a little nervous. You always want to be a little nervous because it keeps you on your toes, right? From the creators of Rogue One. Hot damn, it better be! So I believe he's getting recruited by this new character, Luthan Rail. So he's saying, the Empire's choking us so slowly, we don't even recognize it anymore. Also, they have these cool stormtroopers who walk in formation, and it's just so damn hypnotic. Have you ever been to Comic-Con and seen a battalion of stormtroopers in formation? It's so cool! It's a parade! Who doesn't love a parade? And so this, is, this woman is Deidre Miro. That's her name, and she is clearly one of the villains. And she is, uh, like I think she's like Imperial Security. They do an awful job, spoiler alert. Okay, just like they can't hit anything, they can't shoot, they can't do security. Look at the thumb holes, love it. So this is Adria Arona, who's from Morbius. Uh, also, she was in Six Underground, so she's got really bad luck with the project she's been attached to, but hopefully this will turn things around. I think she's a great actress, very likable, and I believe the rumor is that she's playing Cassian Andor's sister. So she gets captured here, and I don't think Cassian's going to like that. But I think it could also be a trap. We'll see. There's a little bit of a follow-up on that later on here. So, whew, that looks like a mess. So looks like it's falling apart. Oh, no, I think they're probably working on it. Yeah, this is like some kind of factory or, or, or shipyard. It's like a star shipyard. That's pretty cool. So he hangs around there, apparently, again, horrible security. Maybe he works there, and he's, like, coming in and out of work. That's cool. I could see that. So I love this line because he says, wouldn't you rather give it all to something real? And we know that Cassian Andor eventually does give it all, literally his life for the rebellion. So this is not only the beginnings of the rebellion, but this is how Cassian Andor gets recruited into the rebellion as, you know, he's a dashing thief, you know, and criminal. Uh, and they're like, we could use your skills for good. He's like, mm, I don't know, man. <laughs> Because that's the other thing with rebellions. Everybody always thinks they're the hero. So you got to be really careful. So look, I love, this is hilarious. So hold on. <laughs> I can't believe that Tony Gilroy wasn't like, let's take that again. I mean, it looks ridiculous. I mean, his hood looks so silly. It does not work. I'd be like, why do you need a hood to walk around here? You know, I don't know. I think he should, I would be like, maybe he comes down with the hood already on and one of you guys could adjust it for him. He's got the fingerless gloves. I like Stellan Skarsgård, although he looks so much like Hugh Bonneville in this trailer, I think. Or maybe Hugh Bonneville looks so much like Stellan Skarsgård, because technically Stellan Skarsgård was here first, and also Hugh Bonneville, you know, got, you know, lost a lot of weight, got very healthy, and so he, now he kind of turned into Stellan Skarsgård. I watched a Hugh Bonneville, it looked horrible, trailer for Netflix this morning, so he's very much on my mind. Also, I'm always so impressed with Hugh Bonneville, how he, you know, became so healthy. 
Uh, Because I watched Downton Abbey and Paddington. All right. (laughs) Hugh Bonneville has a good track record himself. All right. So look, I love this. I love this space farm. Space farm. So that's one of Saw Gerrera's guys, as you might remember from Rogue One. So he's going to talk to him. And he's like, you know, they're talking about semantics. And Saw Gerrera is like, let's stop. Let's stop pussyfooting around, man. It's war. I like Saw Gerrera. He gets right to the bottom of it. And Saw Gerrera, of course, has become, he was introduced in Rogue One, but uh, Dave Filoni in the animated series have really gone to town with his backstory. So here we go. The rebels, they're not enjoying it. They're not, they don't, they don't really like being ruled by the empire. So I guess they're not choking that slowly. So you can see some rebellion. I love the space shots. Now this guy, someone's talking to him and he says, there's fermenting out there. And he says, Pockets are fermenting, which means time to get some bribe money. So he's like, hey, man, I see opportunity for us. And there he is. Look, these guys, they're all getting fat with opportunity. They're like, delicious. I mean, I'm like, what kind of security forces are these? So here, these guys, they not look happy to see them. Isn't that cool? Look at all the wealth. We'll see a better shot of the city. As someone who lives in a city, I do love Star Wars cities. So that looks great too. These ships are great. Oh, so, oh, you know, the Empire, you know, they're evil, but the architecture is fantastic. So they have some plans. And see, so that's them together. And she's been arrested. And she says, are you a fish or a thief? So my theory is, is that D, uh, D- Dedra Miro, or is it Deidre or Dedra? I'd be like, I'm having trouble. I just see your name on your name tag. Everybody, I wish everybody did have name tags, quite frankly. But Dead Romero, or Miro, uh, is saying, are you a fish caught in my net, or are you a thief? I suspect maybe she's trying to turn her and says, why don't you work for me? I'd be like, hey, you dummy, maybe I'm a, I'm, maybe I'm a bait, a.k.a. trap, a trap, a trap, as you all know from Star Wars lore. I'd be like, maybe I wanted you to arrest me, although she's pretty darn convincing if this is a trap. Cassian Andor is going to be real upset. So look at this. This is interesting. At first, I thought they were just trying to show off that uh, in his earlier in his life, because you know he gets a haircut. You know, so this is early Luth- Luthan Rail. So at first, I thought he was just very wealthy, but I believe he's not happy. But I believe he and this person who maybe is his daughter, uh, this is Clea, are actually jewelers. Isn't that fascinating? You know, that is like a trade that would put them in connection with the very wealthy, but yet they wouldn't necessarily have that mindset because they're tradespeople. Fascinating! And of course, you know, a lot of people, you know, jewels are very important to hiding and maintaining wealth because they largely keep their value and you can, it's better to kind of like keep your money in that way than it is sometimes to put it in a bank or in other forms of places to hold it. And, you know, I think Jewelers have, like, were a big factor in a lot of World War II situations, so I think it's pretty freaking genius. So that's their, you know, back, you know, and that's their tools of, the, tools of the trade, and I think that's his showroom. Isn't that great? I hope that's the case. And so he seems to maybe do a whole lot of stuff. You know, we always wonder who makes all the crazy stuff they're wearing in Star Wars. Here he is! And there's Mon Mothma, who it looks like she shops there. Is that her space limo? It looks like it is! And uh, she's like, you're slipping. And he's like, no, I've just been hiding for too long. And I must say, as much as I might have, might have been you know, making jokes about um, Stellan Skarsgård's inability to put a hood on, he sure can pilot a ship. He looks pretty in control there. I love it. And look, he's, he means business, too, if that is him. Although, what the heck is he going to do against a destroyer? Maybe he's just trying to get past it. So, almost looks like, is that a hidden Mickey? No. <laughs> It'd be funny if it was. All right, so there we go. Look at the city. Oh, it's very Fifth Element, actually. Fifth Element, to the degree that Fifth Element should be like, wait a minute. But doesn't that look gorgeous? So beautiful. I never understood how anyone could have, like, traffic in the sky. It just seems to me horribly dangerous. Like, why would everybody stick to their lines? People don't even stick to the road lines that they're supposed to on a road on the ground. All right, so there's Mon Mothma presenting and she's at some kind of party here. This was so funny. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of like Star Wars Succession, right? <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? And so Mon Mothma's like, they all just think I'm, anno- I'm this annoying lady senator. But she's like, in fact, that's exactly what I want them to think because I'm tricking them all. She's like, they won't know what I'm really up to. And he's like, oh, 
what's that? Is it going to impl- implicate me? So yes, this is Ben Miles. Uh, he's from Coupling, and he also reappeared on The Crown many years later. C- the cu- Coupling was such a big show. Jack Davenport was on that show, but nobody from it really, I don't believe, became huge, which is interesting. It's a little bit. It was. It, I think I believe it inspired one of the things that inspired Friends, uh, and no one from Friends really became super super huge. I guess Jennifer Aniston to a degree. So look, so that's so succession. Haha, <laughs> I love it. Let's see if my moth was that ruthless. So there's Fiona Shaw. They're really hiding her. She just has a tear, and that robot's like, I'm out of tissues. You cry too much. So explosion. Witness the beginning. And so I look at that. You know what I like about this? This looks like a Star Wars subway station, and I'm all here for it. That looks fantastic. That's Sakyla. That's, oh, Clea. That's Luthen Rail's, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, associate who seems to be helping him with the rebellion. She's like, this is it. There he is uh, in his, in his uh, secret uniform with more subterfuge. We'll see what his plan is. He looks to be like some kind of subway, right? Although this looks to me more workman than transportation. Although who knows, maybe that's like the front of it. That's what it looks like. So we have some kind of shootout in the bowels of the city perhaps, or in that ship, uh, spaceship, uh, starship yard. So witness the beginning of the rebellion. And he's like, I love that line. He said, I'm really tired of losing. I thought that was a phenomenal line. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. So it looks like they might be getting ready to blow this dam. The damn dam. Oh, that's such a funny thing from National Lampoon. Get the damn photos. What's the damn plan? (laughs) Where are the damn bombs? All right. So this is like a prison scene. It looks like a prison breakout. This is where Andy Serkis is going to show up. So uh, that's very Jokery, by the way. I mean, you can't tell me. I think that I would suspect that Joker is probably an inspiration for this to some degree. Um, maybe that's how they convinced Disney to let them be so gritty and dark. So it's, he's like, I'm getting out of here, man. And these guys are like, we're the worst security ever. So this guy's cool. Look, he's like, uh, he's like some, uh, you know, doctor for criminals. And I like, uh, I think having a lot of hands is a good idea. I, I think he looks like he might do a good job. Uh, so we'll see re- rebels. They're like, we're not going to take it anymore. Uh, and so we have a couple of good action scenes. This is gorgeous. And we know Cassie and Andor is going to make it because it's got to go die in Rogue One. But that's still beautiful, right? So look at that. He's trying to escape, and they have those uh, TIE fighters going after him. And look, I love the cracks in the shield. He's like, I better land this hunk of junk. He's a great guy. I really wish he would meet K2SO on here. Maybe in season two, baby. Maybe that'll be the tease in episode 12, because I love K2SO, and I need to see how that relationship started. All right, so what did you think? What do you think of these three shows? Which ones do you think are going to do the best? Uh, And how does this trailer look to you? Share your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for going over it with me. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.